So here's how to position your business to win. First, I want to tell you a story exactly on this topic. When I first started a gym, I was being, I was trying to be crushed by my competitor. This big box fitness club called Good Life came to town, opened right in the street next to me. They had a four lane highway. They had a sales team. They had more equipment, more classes, more of everything than me. Right. So here I was, $250,000 on the line. And this big box club is coming to crush me. And I was faced with, with a dilemma. I was like, okay, do I compete directly against them when I know that I have less than them? Right. So I realized pretty quickly that I needed to pivot, I needed to quit what I was doing, that I couldn't compete, okay? And it wasn't quitting because I knew it was going to be hard. It was quitting because it wasn't very smart, right? So it reminded me of when I was, when I used to wrestle. One time I was at the Arnold Classic and I went to wrestle a, 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 in a competition and it was a submission wrestling competition and the guy was a division one wrestler. And when I went against him, I tried to push the whole match against this wrestler that was better than me, that had way more experience than me. And I pushed and pushed and pushed, and I was gassed, and finally he beat me in the end. And then I had an athlete that I was a strength coach for. He went against that same athlete right after. But instead of pushing against him, what he did is he put him in the guard. He laid on his back and let him win. But then he reached over his shoulder, grabbed him in a kimura, and tapped him out. Okay? It took him 20 seconds. It required no effort. Okay, so he saw the strength of that athlete and he said, I'm not going to compete using the same thing. In the same way, David and Goliath's story, where David sees Goliath and says, okay, I can't beat him at strength. How else can I beat him? I'm going to be nimble. I'm going to get this sling. And the sling beats him, right? And in another example is Campbell Soup. Campbell Soup had this factory with all this equipment that they were heavily invested in. And this company wanted to go up against Campbell. And they realized that the best way to go is to look at what their strength is and to find the weakness within their strength. In the same way the wrestler, in the same way that Goliath had this strength, this company said, wow, they're heavily invested in metal and machinery around the metal. So let's make our soup in cardboard boxes. And, and by doing that, they started to market themselves as healthier soups to be in cardboard instead of the metal that's leaking into the soups. Genius, right? To position yourself against the strength of the competition. So when I had my my fitness club, I realized that good life was there, this big box. And I look at what is the weakness in their strength. And the weakness in their strength is that they're so big and they do everything that they can't be small and personal. So I looked at my finances and I looked at how I was making about 50% of the profit was coming from personal training. And the other one was membership sales. So what I did is I quit membership sales and I included it into personal training. I decided to reposition myself and my business model to be about personal training, to be a personal training studio. Now, of course, that came with a dip in finance. It took me a year to recover the membership fees. Okay, but I had to change the whole business model. I had to change the way I was uh, paying my trainers. I had to uh, instead focus on recruiting the right people, training them to be the best they can be, right? And with that focus, I was able to, after a year, really help everyone in my geographical location realize that if you want a personal trainer, go there. And after a year, I had recovered the money and I was making a good profit and I was able to differentiate myself from the from from the big box but it didn't end there guys it didn't end there 
So now that I felt like, oh, I can breathe again. I, I'm out of, out of this darkness. Another competitor came. This time, it was the number one personal trainer in the city. This guy was like a media whore. He was on the radio station. He was on TV. He had been doing it for so long. He happens to open right next door to my facility. So here I am with this same dilemma, yet I'm not going to change my category at this time because I realize that this is, this, this is a space that I can compete in. But I wondered, what is the difference between that company and my company? So I started asking. I started asking anyone that had went there, people that were shopping around when they come in. I'd say, what is the difference between there and here? Why did you sign up? Clients that would come in, staff, I would ask them, what's the difference? Why aren't you working there? And it really made me go inwards on on figuring out what really defines me beyond even the category of personal training, okay? And there's two things I really, I really want to share with you that I got out of this, this big insight. Because the first thing is that you are your business. That what was different in my business than the other guy was that the founder himself has values that are very different from mine. Okay, that we are an expression of our companies. What we are creating is just simply what's inside of you. So I had values that were different than his. My purpose was different than his. Though from the outside, you can say we both did personal training. There was a feeling that when people bought from me, that was different than the feeling that they bought from them. So the second lesson I want to share with you is that within us, there's really there's a purpose. And when I dove into this, I actually found when I started studying psychology, Carl Jung, Plato uh, was one of the original of this. All these personality tests are always based on these four things, these four purposes that live within us. And that is, and I did a whole video on this, so you can go check it out uh, on finding uh, the four purposes. But it's basically the most innovative, the best, the biggest, and the most caring, okay? And within us, we have one of these four. Well, this other guy, this other personal trainer, he had this, he had a, a tendency towards the purpose of being the best. So his pricing was different. His business model was different. Who he hired was different. Mine was about being the most caring. We... I always ask myself, how can we deliver on our service in a way that delights customers, that wows them? How do we turn, how do we turn, you know, friends into client, uh, clients into friends and friends into raving fans? So my, my leading question was always, how can we care more? How can we do more? Right. And his question was, how can we be better? How can we make ourselves look better? So that what that looked like in practical terms is his pricing model was different than mine. He had a $150 uh, consultation fee before you even got to know about his program. Mine was free, right? So if you, uh, I, I had many clients that would come in and say, no, I'm not willing to pay that guy just to see what, what his program's about. That doesn't seem right to me. So they come to me and then they turn out to be, you know, some of the highest paying clients that we have. So you're going to attract who you are, your values. If you can really instill them in your company, you're going to start to, and in your marketing, you're going to start to attract who you are at the core of these values. Okay. So, um, so as I did this, I started to realize that we are personal trainers who care. And that went into the marketing. I had billboards of clients with their, uh, with their personal trainer having an arm around them. And the billboard said, personal trainers who care. We differentiated ourselves from our category and, and, and within that category. So, you know, 
Then after that, there was in-home personal training that started to enter the market. You know, there was boot camps, there was online training, all these things started to infiltrate the market, but we had polished the rock that turned to a diamond. We had polished the rock and eventually we found who we were. And it was so strong of an energy because everything was so in line that no matter the competitors in the field, it didn't matter. We became a category of one. So if you have competitors around you, they are a gift. It may not seem that way at the beginning when people are infiltrating your market, but they are there for a reason. They're there to show you more of who you are. And if you really pay attention and you go inwards and you define, ah, this is what makes me me. This is what makes my business my business. And it makes a difference. And you put that out there inside the company and every decision you make, and outside the company in your marketing. You're going to be a category of one and you're going to succeed. So go check out that purpose video. It's gonna take this a little step further.